Um, we're back now. Um, we're so happy to be back. So I just want to give a big thanks to the Public Theater and to HowlRound because HowlRound makes this Zoom magic um, possible. And uh, um, uh, Thea and Audrey and Miranda are here to support us with that. We really think that. Thank you guys for being here to support us. So, um, yeah, so how, how those of you who don't know how Watchmen work goes, here's how it goes. Basically, we work together for 20 minutes and I still have my little timer. So I'm going to time us for 20 minutes. And then we are going to and you can work on anything you want. And then we will talk with the time remaining. We'll go for an hour. We will talk um, about your work and your creative process. OK, so uh, we won't be reading our work. We, we don't. Uh, have the time space continuum for that but we will be talking i will be inviting you to talk about your work and your creative process so like you know i have trouble getting started or i don't know when i'm finished or how do i get a character to talk to me or i'm having trouble with the uh, the story of my novel or i'm having trouble writing a song whatever whatever it is your process that's what we want to talk about um audrey is there anything else we need to mention Yes. So here's how you ask a question. So I'm going to hit re record. Sorry. I know I'm like, I'm like, do I remember how to do it? Um, so basically we will be taking questions as, as Susan Laurie said, um, you can ask a question if you're inside of the zoom by clicking the raise your hand button, which I believe is on the top of your screen or the bottom. I'm going to find out and get back to you about that. Um, but you'll hit the <laughs> raise your hand button and then we will call on you. Um, it's not in any particular order. Uh, necessarily um, and we try and get to as many questions as we can um, before our time is up um, if you are watching on howlround.tv you can tweet a question at us at, at watch me work slp with the hashtag howlround h-o-w-l-r-o-u-n-d um, and we will be looking at that and we'll try to get to those as well but i think that is it yeah except uh, we have to comment we have to say hi to lynn we have to say hi to ryan's mustache <gasps> Because that is kind of new to us. Okay, and so we got all that out of the way. Um, here we go. I'm going to set the timer. It's already set. Ha ha. So uh, here we go. We're going to work and then we're going to talk. So here we go.
<laughs> oh, hold on, SLP. I'm going to make you a host so you can unmute yourself. There you go. Yay. Yay. Hooray. Hooray. All right. All right. All right. So um, we just did the work part. Now we're going to do the talk part or um, we did the action and now we're going to do the dialogue. So um, anybody have any questions about your work, your creative process, um, you know, fire away. Let's talk. Look at all these beautiful people. Hi, people I recognize, like Emanuela and Nick and all the guys. Crystal. All right, Crystal, you're up. Oh, you have a question. All right, girl. Go for it. Hi. Hi. It's so good to see you. It's so good to be back. Congratulations on everything that's been happening. I'm just... When I saw the email, I was elated. It's the highlight of my week, my month, my year. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so actually, um, I worked on something. I'm working on something different today, but um, I don't, honestly, I don't remember the last time we met. The last time we met, um, I was working on a piece called The Father Chronicles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Okay. So. I remember. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so I started, um, I submitted it to a couple of places. Oh, great. Um, and I got to do a reading at the Cherry Lane of a portion of the play. So that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it's one of those pieces that might be like a lifelong piece. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just kind of add on to it as like life kind of, maybe there'll be a second volume mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't, I don't, when I wrote it, it was very, um, it was very um, soul led, emotionally led. Mm -hmm. And I guess now, you know, now it's like, okay, if I want to add on to it, how do I, how do I, how do I write from the same place? But so time has passed. And so the emotional urgency isn't there to mm -hmm. get it out. So like, how do I still write the same with the same urgency, even though it's not there, but for, I guess from a different perspective, like I've, I've kind of run out of ideas in other words. Mm -hmm. um, and I've run out of fire, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry, fire for it. So I guess I'm just wondering how, how do I continue the process mm -hmm. of that particular story, knowing that it's, it's just going to take it's probably just going to be something that's going to be a part of my life for a, uh -huh. a long while. Uh -huh. I love that question. That's such a good question, Crystal. You always have some of the best questions. It's like, yeah, <laughs> going right to the heart of, of, of stuff that, that is important to you. And it's beautiful how your questions are often like so helpful. The, I mean, answers and the questions are just so helpful to other people, to all of us. Um, oh, um, no, cause I, I just enjoy it. Um, it's like, so you've, you've started writing this, this piece, you've gotten a lot of it done. You mm -hmm. know that it's going to take a lot more work. When you started it, you had this fire, this urgency, right? right. And now knowing that it's going to take something you're going to be adding on throughout your whole life, or at least for a little while longer, like maybe a couple, you know, you don't know, but it's going to take more time. How do you write with the same kind of fire and urgency? Right. I mean, now you guys know me. I'm going to talk about dating, right? It's like dating. You know, that first date, you know, you can hear the music, you know, right? It's like your favorite, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then like, you know, you're with somebody for a little while and then like, who's going to do the dishes? And mm. are you going to go out in the snow and get the milk or the, the, the soy milk or whatever it is? You know what I'm saying? It's right. like... Um, you know, sort of passion can get you, can get you stuck, can get you in bed, but you want something to keep you right. And that's dedication, right? That's dedication. So you have to treat it like you would uh, a spouse or a relationship or just a good friend. Let's take the, the, the romance thing out of it. Just a good friend. Right. I mean, so the first, so when you're writing your work in the beginning, it's all like, yeah, I'm excited. I'm on fire. You all, you know, I'm on a roll. This is great. And then like, then it's like, I right, now you got to just show up every day. 
and you got to throw some words down. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to do. So I would say dedication, discipline, a schedule is your friend. Right. And, you know, this is like I'm the broken I'm the mom who keeps saying the same thing. <laughs> but, but it's but it, it's, you know, it, it's been very helpful to me because, you know, I start things and then, you know, after whatever a week, a month, a year, whatever, I'm not as excited about them. But then the schedule is my friend. So I say I pick a time every day where I'm going to show up for the work. Right. And Crystal, I mean, say you're writing more than one thing, right? But you yeah. say, I'm going to show up for this, for the Father Chronicles for, for 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes every day or, or whatever time is manageable. You fit 15 minutes, you know, whatever time is manageable. Um, I would say uh, choose a 30-minute time. So, sorry, I have my guitar picks on. Choose a, 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 a smallish time slot so it can be manageable, you know? So 30 minutes a day, every day. You're going to show up for the Father Chronicles. You're just going to just talk to the play. Just what do I got? You know, again, my, some of my, you know, my favorite things. Where are they? Here they are. My desk is such a mess. Um, oh, look, it's the index card. Da -da -da -da. Right. <laughs> I know, right? My favorite thing. I've done more writing. I know not. I'm, I know I'm a bag lady, but oh, my gosh, there's some projects in there. And look, here's some more. Oh, look, it's a different project. Look, look, I done more writing on index cards. How great is that? So you get your index cards, you get a clip, right? Maybe you just, I'm just going to blah, blah, blah on index cards about the Father Chronicles, right? Put in, or open a file on your computer. Just as good, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just write for 15 minutes about what I'm thinking. I imagine a scene. I imagine a monologue. I think of something that could happen, a piece of plot line. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so in addition to passion, which helps us in our creative endeavors, dedication, discipline, a schedule will also help us get to uh, the finish line with any, any given project. Okay. Yeah. Does that help? little, yeah. little tiny bit. yes <laughs> so that seem, does it seem doable you know 15 minutes if i could 30? do 15 minutes i think that's i think that's doable for for this particular piece i mean I, i've come to watch me work and have only had like two sentences come out in the 20 minutes but if i know that like there's a set time that i'm constantly coming to it i can do it yeah there you go just set aside 15 minutes set your timer and just write and dare crystal dare to to write something less than great yeah i think that's my fear only because where you know again where i was writing from was like a grieving place and now it's like oh no like it's not that that's not there it's just that in the in between times I got nothing, you know, or there's, you know, I don't know. Well, you can replace the, I got nothing to, I got something. It's just a little, maybe it's just a little harder to get at. Yeah. You know? So yeah. maybe it's, maybe they the emotions are more, you know, shy. They're shy emotions. They're emotions that aren't so ready to come out. You know, they need a little coaxing. You know, they need a little more faith in them. Maybe they don't think they're appropriate. You know? Yeah. You know, maybe they're awkward and weird and, and not as nicely formed or as, you know, as, as fully formed, you know? Yeah. So they need a little more dedication on your part. You know? Yeah. You know, before you were showing up for yourself and for the grieving process, and now you're showing up for that next level of writing which is the dedication yeah and that's you know and there that's where the artist is made yeah okay you know yeah you no know? yeah so it's also just to know that what you're going through is also all part of the artist's path. It's all part of the journey. You know, it's not like you failed because it just doesn't come easily or doesn't feel all the same, you know? 
Yeah. You can also tell yourself when you say I got nothing, say I got nothing that's easy right now. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm digging. I'm sitting for it. You know, give yourself some positive feedback. Okay. You know, that, that'll help. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I always love your questions. Love seeing you, Crystal. Same here. It's Crystal. All right, we've got our next question, Monique. All right, go for it. Hi, um, I was hey. wondering if you can talk a little bit about um, what happens for you in the revision stage. So you wrote the first draft and what, what are you looking for? What do you do mm -hmm. in that next draft? Great, that's a great question, Monique. Again, a, a great question was just helpful to me and for everybody. So. Um, yeah, there's, um, let's see, there's, I often say there's two kinds of courage. There's the writing, the courage of writing, the courage of making that first draft, right? Which takes a lot of nerve and guts and, and passion and dedication, and all those things. And then there's the nerve, passion, dedication that comes with the rewriting process. That's the second kind of courage, right? And what, I'm, what I'm looking for and what I encourage people to look for is listen for, if you read it, can read your work aloud right? Um, preferably standing. Because <laughs> you're, you're on your feet, you know what I mean? I mean, and no one has to be watching. You don't have to have an audience. That's not what I'm implying. But you stand up there and you read your work aloud to yourself. I mean, you read it out loud to, uh, if you can get some privacy in your room. And you listen for what, where it feels like it's moving along and then where maybe it feels like it's going, oh, like that. Okay. So those parts you can just note like, okay, I'm not as engaged right there. You know, um, uh, maybe, you know, I'm not sitting forward. I'm not leaning forward. I'm kind of leaning back. Okay. The energy isn't quite as intense as together. Um, so you look for those parts. Um, and, th and that's the main thing I look for where my energy is sharp and where it lags. And I also read it and go, how is the, what is this? How does this scene feel? What is this scene? What is this scene about? You know, if it's a play, even if it's a novel, what is this? What, what is this chapter about? You know, um, or if you're writing a song, I was during our time. I was working on a song, and like the the lyrics were like like that, and I'm like, nah, that's like my energy's leaning back, right? So I'm like, okay, what am I? What am I really trying to get to right here? you know, so I can pull it forward, become more intense with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I often do this little game just for fun. So um, what's your, do you, let's see. Um, what's your favorite color? I'll give you some choices. Brown, gray, black, white. Which one would you choose? Gray. Okay, great, good. Like we'll see today, gray, silver. Okay. And can you think of your favorite piece of music just off the top of your head? It would be something by Rochelle Farrell. <laughs> great, Rochelle Farrell. Okay, great. So there you are on this gray horse, right? This beautiful gray horse. And you have in your hand the sword of discrimination, which isn't like racial discrimination. It's like, you can tell what should be in your work and what shouldn't be in your work, right? And you got your favorite song on and you were going through a field and you were cutting down everything, plants. These are plants, like a wheat field. You're pruning everything that doesn't, doesn't fit, doesn't sound right, right? And you're just going. And so it's a joyous process. And the beautiful thing about doing that kind of pruning in your work in my experience, what happens when you cut something, I, I say I take out the magic scissors. One of my favorite songs is, what's that song? Um, this shit too high, you gotta cut it. Anyway, it's about drugs, but I pretend it's about writing. So, um, but um, I cut stuff. And what happens when we cut is that it falls to the ground and it falls on fertile ground. And so more often than not, you will find another place to put that 
maybe beautiful passage that you cut, that beautiful line of dialogue, that beautiful moment in your novel, those beautiful lyrics, you know? So it's not like you're cutting them and throwing them away and you'll never see them again. You're cutting to make the thing that you have the strongest it can be. And then the other bits that you've cut will probably resurface in some other work at, a, at another time. Okay, so it's a joyous process. The editing is a very joyous process. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Monique. Great question. All right, looks like we don't have a question at the moment and it might be because I forgot how to tell everyone how to raise their hands. So if you're looking at the bottom of your screen, it's in the reactions category. Oh, so reactions. Is that where it is? Yes, this is different than it used to be. I know, reactions. <laughs> so you can click raise hand. Okay. Reactions. Yeah. Oh shit, I'm looking at that now. I don't want to raise my hand, but I'm going to look. <laughs> Susan Lori has a question. <laughs> we also sit inside. We also just sit and wait. Yeah. I've got a question from Emmanuel. Hey, there you go. Hi again. I'm Hi. so happy. It makes my heart very warm that this is going again. It's, it was amazing during the lockdown. So anyway, thank you for holding this again. Are you still, um, were you calling from France? No. Was that yes. Like, yeah. Right. Right. I remember. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Still okay. calling from France. Oh, still still <laughs> France. Woohoo. Oh, cool. Way cool. Okay. Um, so I have a question. Um, more and more, uh, I want to get more serious about uh, writing. I've always done it, but it's and it's something that I feel is very important, but it's always taken a back seat. And I think it might be fear or something. So, but right now it feels like a transition period. The the lockdown helped a lot with that. Um, that it's something that is vital and needs to come to the forefront so um i guess some kind of advice to get rid of all the distractions and everything else that becomes important and more important and takes all your attention and so oh i don't have time to write but that's a very big excuse so that's my question how to give birth to that importance right 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 that's really that's another really good your questions are so good today okay no, um that is great and and we all have something that you know we have things that we feel more comfortable doing whatever it is you know like what, what do you do for your like job job manual uh i am an actor singer and i teach as well okay okay, okay. I've got, like all different projects that kind of no that's fantastic <laughs> so you're already like putting yourself out there in a major way right you're already putting no. yourself out there in a major way so this is so maybe you say ah oh, i'm 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 whatever i'm preparing for a role i'm going to an audition i'm i'm teaching a class i don't have time for my own writing so maybe you put those important things getting to the forefront right and your writing might be taking a back to these things so it's it's harder to to look critically at those important things because that might be how you pay your rent or it might be how you just have your great joys in your life um if you're spending you know 20 hours a day doom scrolling we that's easy to talk about cutting out but if you're spending many hours a day preparing for a class or teaching a class or whatever that's a little difficult um so hmm so it's, let's just say that uh, nothing that's taking up your time is bad, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's not like condemn the stuff that's taking up your time. Let's just to get, like you said, make room for the thing that you also very much want to do. And I would say hmm, deadlines are good or finish lines, finish lines, mm -hmm. you know, are good. So I would say uh, maybe uh, friendship groups. This group is really good for that. I know a lot of people who come to watch me work have said, and James is not, I said, people are not Jim. You know, people nod their head. We said like, okay, so how about um, by the end of the year, right? The end of the calendar year, December, you cross the finish line with a piece that you're, that you're wanting to finish. Okay, is that possible, you know? Is, is that possible? Yeah. Okay. So how many pages of that piece would you need to write, do you think? Hmm. Um, I'd say 50. F five, zero? 
five zero. Okay, yeah. five zero. Okay, great. So today is the fifteenth of November or the sixteenth of November in France. Mm -hmm. So anybody good with math? We got thirty days in December ish. You know, thirty one days, and then we got like it's forty five days, I guess. Thank you. Great, great. Okay, okay. So you got like let's just say let's just say you got to throw out throw down a page a day right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's okay. That's okay. I didn't say they have to be like prize winning publishable. The world is going to read them pages. I said pages. We're talking what Ju uh, Julia Cameron says a lot. We're talking quantity. Don't worry about the quality, right? Mm -hmm. We don't worry about the quality. Not when you're just running toward the, the finish line. Um, okay. So what I want you to do is see, see if you can get a page a day. Okay. Yeah. Um, which means, which means what you're going to have to do you have maybe um, 30 minutes a day to devote to this project. Okay. Do you have two instances of 30 minutes a day where you can devote to this project? Yeah. Okay. Cause that's kind of dealable, right? If I say like, okay, sit down and turn on your timer for a whole hour. That's like, <laughs> ah, right. Yeah. But if you have, two 30 minute segments a day that might be more manageable yeah. or four 15 minute segments a day. Whatever's going to, whatever works in your day. Mm -hmm. And then I just want you to set your timer and just spew stuff. Vomit. <laughs> stuff. And we can get competitive about who's going to, who's going to write the shittiest draft. But it, what you're going to do, what you're going to do is you're going to get in the habit of prioritizing your writing, mm -hmm. you're building a habit. And someone said, some, I was reading somewhere, I'm looking around, it takes 21 days to make a habit, whatever. You're training yourself, you're training your brain, you're training your, your whatever, wiring, whatever it's called in there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're training yourself in the habit of your day. Maybe if you have a spouse or roommates or something, you're training them to see you writing, all that kind of stuff, right? Training your cat. Oh, that's impossible, but oh, look, cat, I'm writing, you know? Okay. But does, does that, does that make sense? So what you want to do is you want to give yourself 30 minutes, a couple of blocks a day in which you're just going to vomit out stuff. And what you're looking for is to get a manuscript of a certain length. And then at the end of the year, you write the end on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we go into <laughs> what we talked about with, with, with well, who was it? Monique a minute ago. Then we'll talk about rewriting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because your, your task is not to write the best thing the world has ever read, but your task is to prioritize your writing. That's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Very sneaky, yeah. this shit, right? Sneaky shit yeah. up here. Okay. <laughs> yes. Right? Okay. Yes. You do it every day. And even if some days you're going, oh my God, I hate my writing. So set the timer for 15 minutes. <sighs> pretend like you're in a zombie movie. Just pretend <laughs> zombies are coming and writing will help them stay away from me. <laughs> zombie is biting my neck. Writing's going to help it stop. <laughs> you know, Just make a fucking game of it. Shit. The things we do to get our work done. Okay. Does that help? Yes. And when we have right, watch me work, and we're going to figure out, I'm going to figure out with Audrey after this class, how often we're going to be able to do this. We're going to figure out. And then you come and you check in and you go, yo, you know, I, okay. I wrote every day this week, you know, like that. Okay. Okay. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. Thank Good. You. Good thank question. You. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you. All right, we've got another question from M. Cookley. All right. There you go. Thank you. Hello. I'm so happy to hey, see yeah. you. Hey, um, Hello. Uh, so this is my question, and you know, bear with me because I am a new playwright. Um, and so what I'm struggling with right now is fitting my writing into form. Mm -hmm. So I've spent a lot of time um, with various teachers learning how to write from the subconscious and so I feel very confident in my ability to do that I have characters I have stories there are things I want to say I can get it down on paper I can write the play but 
um, I need to fit it into a form so that because this is performance art and people have an expectation when they're coming to see a play, like it needs to hit certain beats or we need to make sure that the person, you know, that our characters have, um, that they're going after goals and wants and a, the audience can track those things. And so when I'm writing my plays and I'm going back and I'm editing them, trying not to write a whole new play in the editing process. Mm -hmm. um, to, that's been a huge struggle because I feel like I'm losing um, the organic story that I was telling that was come out, coming out of my subconscious because I'm trying to, which I need to, fit it into form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sound like, I'm, it sounds like you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Because this is a this is a huge this is a I no. mean that's what I was working on after, during this period was okay, I need to make sure that this is hitting all of those um mm -hmm. check marks, I guess. But I, I don't want to call it that. I just want to make sure that the story that I'm telling is resonating with the audience. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well the, it's so so hmm. Hmm. Uh uh huh. Do you have a kids no. no a pet i used to okay, what, a dog cat it was a cat yeah cat right cats are a little tricky because like, <laughs> but no but but um because because uh, cats have a big subconscious and it like goes like i am always gonna be free you know like a great <laughs> cat great but but cats also appreciate structure also they like to be fed right by yeah. the by their by their person okay what i'm saying is your relationship to your between your subconscious and the check marks or what are the story beats let's call them right that you're yeah. talking about is not adversarial it's like a cat to its person Ooh, oh good oh good <laughs> cat like oh yes yeah, so i like that very much your subconscious really likes that because when you take the story and and allow it to organize itself in uh within those story beats then you crank up the delivery system right have you ever had someone tell you a story like blah, 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 and you're like what are they even fucking talking about yeah. right i mean all those people who just random ass shit right and then someone's gonna tell you okay once upon a time there was this woman right and she had some long hair and she was up in a tower okay and then you're like yeah wow what right we so you're 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 improving the delivery system and that's what those story beats do okay okay so i think part of maybe what i'm hearing is part of the problem is you think that they're in conflict yeah. they're not mm -hmm. in conflict they're actually the same thing it's just yeah okay they're very friendly okay it's okay. like i mean and i i've had uh, well i've had a couple cats and but more dogs than cats you know and and a kid you know kids you think oh they just want to be free they just want to do that no they don't <laughs> no they want a parent to say sit down and, and eat your food eat your dinner, do your homework. Kids need structure so they can grow into, you know, like people who you want to have a conversation with. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you're, you're, and your, and your story wants a structure also. Um, it, it longs for that. And there might be people who tell you differently. Um, and that might be true for them. In my okay. experience, and I have a very active subconscious, you know, my subconscious, oh, love. it's like a cat. Yes, oh, yes. Then, because then I can tell you a story that's going to click into your head, quiet all the chatter, all the background chatter, and totally like control the room of a thousand people at a time. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to do that, you know, make friends with the story. Make friends. Yeah, okay. make friends. But you're, you're friends already. You're friends already. It's not make friends. Just acknowledge, you know, pet the cat. <laughs> that makes so much sense okay. okay yeah i was coming at it from this adversary point of view but we both serve a purpose so yeah pet the cat the cat's gonna purr <laughs> it's gonna be great i can't okay. that 
Thank you. Sure. And, and, and remember, like I was, I was telling Monique, everything you trim and cut and shape, if you have to put it off to the side, no worries. It's going to flower in a different work. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not dead. It won't die. It's just going to grow in a different garden. No worries. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take that on. I know. Me too. <laughs> okay. All right. We've got about five and a half minutes left. So we've got ah. maybe one more question. All right. Looks like Mary has a question. Go for it, Mary. Hey, Mary. Um, I, I have, I'm in graduate school right now to get my MFA in theater, uh, to be a theater educator. Cool. And I have never taken a playwriting class, but I've always enjoyed, obviously I love theater. I love plays. So I'm just starting to like delve into playwriting and of course not being offered next semester, when you're writing a play, do you write like a synopsis or a story first before you get into dialogue? And I know this is very like playwriting 101 question, but I, I just don't, I have a great, I think it's a great idea for a play, but I don't really know where to start. Right, right, right. I love that question. I think it's a great question. Um, it, it depends on the project, how I approach it. I would suggest a... Uh, like an outline, a beat sheet, a synopsis. Why do I suggest that? Because again, you don't, like we're talking to him, you don't get so uh, wrapped up in the river of your subconscious, you know? So, and the subconscious can take you like undertow. Woo, where'd she go? I don't know. Or you suddenly you're whatever, Virginia Woolf and you're lost in the river. No, this, um, what's great about an outline or a beat sheet, beat, beat sheet means, this happens and this happens and this happens, right? So you can, the beats of the story. What's great about starting with a beat sheet or again, my favorite thing, index cards. You know? I love those index cards. Right? I studied dance for years and Twyla Tharp has a similar, she makes boxes oh. when oh, she's cool. working on a project and she puts everything in a box. Oh, cool. And sometimes she forgets about the box. Oh, wow. And then the idea comes back to us and she circles back to the box of ideas. Oh, wow. Wow. Very cool. I have bag. I have plastic bags. That's so sad. <laughs> I know. It's sad. I'm a bag lady. She's a box lady. Cool. She's a box lady, bag lady. Box lady, bag lady. But so the card. So this is kind of because it's it's sort of I love cards because you can carry them around in your bag or backpack or fanny pack or sling or pocket right? They're kind of cool. Um, but you can write your, your, your beats, your story beats on little cards. Also, as you know, you shuffle the cards around. If, if this is scene one, and then suddenly you want it to be scene five, you just kind of do that. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, so uh, you write your story beats on index cards, Mary, or you write them on, you can you, you use a, you know, a, a, a document on your computer. And then you can start to imagine what it's going to look like. And you just, as much as you can, just run the story in your head and see what you think. Pretend you're in the theater watching and just let the curtain come up. Or wait, if there's a curtain, there's the play. What's happening? And just write down what's, what you see. Right. And if you see like, okay, the first thing I see is someone is, is, is you know, I don't know, um, chasing a duck. All right. And then um, uh, no, see nothing. I don't really see anything. But at the end of the play, I know I know that the duck, you know, is 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 in therapy on the couch in analysis. Actually, it's an analysis. And that's the end of the play. That, so that's all I see right now. You know, so then you go back, you keep visiting it and you keep fleshing it out. Does that does that make sense? That makes yeah. such perfect sense. And I'm I have a great I think I have a great imagination, but I always imagine things, even if I'm choreographing or directing a piece. Uh -huh. I, I envision it and I guess I just have to use that same imagination, what I see in playwriting as well. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good luck with it. And check back in. Tell us how it's going. I, I will definitely. All right. Thanks, Mary. 
All right, so we've got just about a minute left. So we want to wrap up. Yeah, let's wrap up. Let's wrap. Up. We are going. We are back doing Watch Me Work. We're so happy to see everybody. Um, I just love uh, this experience with you guys, and um, it really meant a lot. Uh, when we were in the thick of the pandemic, I mean, we probably still are in the thick of the pandemic, but when we were doing it every day and those of you who showed up like every single day, day after day after day, it was a really beautiful thing. And um, now we're back. So we're going to, we're going to figure out, Audrey and I are going to circle up after this and, and figure out what the, what the schedule might be. Um, just so, uh, yeah, just so we're here and whatever. <laughs> That's so big. Exactly. Well, so uh, we're consistent. We're, we'll, we'll let you know so soon. Yeah. So we're consistent, but it's going to be on Mondays. Love you guys too. It's going to be on Mondays. It's going to be at 5 p.m. Um, and uh, we're going to we're going to just go for it. And uh, now that we're we're all back at the public theater, and Howl Round is back in, so we really appreciate you guys for being here. And Ryan's mustache. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <It's always good. laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm just playing with you <laughs> um oh okay so we love you guys we'll see you and something anything audrey you want to say and add no mm -hmm. just keep checking the website we'll add some dates as we have them okay love you guys okay thanks everyone see you next time Bye. thank you